The day we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Sunday, June 4, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link to our Patreon in the description and comment section below. Miami Heat vs Denver Nuggets. There has been plenty of attention place upon the undrafted Miami players who have been playing excellent in the postseason. In game one of the finals, some of those players came back down to earth. Max Truss went 0-10 in the game and 0-9 from 3, he did not score a single point. Caleb Martin was almost Eastern Conference Finals MVP, but he only shot 1-7 in this game for 3 points. Even Jimmy Butler did not play like playoff Jimmy, as he only finished with 13 points. The Heat broke the record for fewest free throw attempts in a playoff game, finishing with just 2. Jimmy Butler addressed this after the game saying, We've got to attack the rim a lot more, myself included. Simply put, Miami is going to have to shoot better if they plan to get a road split, let alone compete in this series. The Heat shot an abysmal 40.6% from the field, including a pedestrian 13 for 39 from three-point range. It's a big reason they were down 17 at half, at 24 in the third, and could never get close the nine points down the stretch. Jimmy Butler's passive play filtered down the roster, as the East Finals MVP was just 6 for 14 from the field for 13 points, 7 rebounds and 7 assists. Max Truss had a nightmare opener, going 0 for 10 from the field, including 9 misses from 3-point range. Bam Adebayo had the strongest game for Miami, he scored 26 points on 52% shooting, and grabbed 13 rebounds. Adebayo was excellent in the mid-range, taking the short pull-up jumpers and floaters, as Jaka hung around the rim. Haywood Highsmith had a surprising game off the bench, scoring 18 points after only averaging 4.3 ppg in the playoffs. Gabe Vincent knocked down 5 threes on his way to 19 points for Miami. The Heat will need more balanced production to take down Denver, as Duncan Robinson, Max Struss and Caleb Martin each played over 20 minutes, but all three combined for only six total points. Tyler Harrow has been testing his injured hand, and it is possible that he plays in Game 2. Victor Oladipo will continue to miss the finals. Miami only ranked 25th in offensive efficiency this season according to Dunksandthrees.com, and those struggles resurfaced in Game 1. Miami has gone 6-5 on the road in the playoffs this season. Caleb Martin was just 1-4-7 for, for 3 points. The lone bright spot was Bam Adebayo, who took the soft look defense Denver gave him to score 26 points, along with 13 boards and 5 assists. While it allowed Bam to show off his mid-range game and array of paint floaters, he was part of a Miami collective that didn't attack the basket enough, as the Heat set a finals record with just 2 free throws all game. And yet, if they had been able to shoot at their playoff rate, this game was there for the taking. Miami had two less turnovers, held the Nuggets to just six offensive rebounds and 103 points. The top three-point shooting team in the postseason, Denver was limited to 29.6% shooting from distance. This is a similar line to Game 1, and the game will play out in a similar way. Denver won by 11 in Game 1, but that does not paint the picture of how dominant Denver was in that game. The Nuggets led by as many as 24, and it took a couple of Kyle Lowry and Haywood Highsmith threes in the fourth to close the gap to 11. The Nuggets are excellent at home, they have not lost a home game in the playoffs. The overall size of the Nuggets is a problem for Miami, they are bigger at every position. Miami's role players are undrafted steals found by Pat Riley, and Denver's role players are former lottery picks and number one rated high school players. If Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. are considered role players, you know you have a strong team. Watch for the Nuggets to control this game again and cover this spread. Take the Nuggets to win and cover in Game 2. Our team pick is Denver minus 8.5 points. If it was ever possible to have a quiet triple-double in the NBA Finals, Nikola Jokic just did exactly that. Jokic had only taken three shot attempts by halftime, but already had a double-double at that point. Jokic only took 12 shots from the floor the whole game, making 8, as 5 other players took more shots from the field, but Jokic was still the leading scorer. 
The Joker finished with 27 points, 14 assists and 10 rebounds, joining Jason Kidd as the only players to record a triple-double in their NBA Finals debut. Jaka Kalwiz downplays the importance of his individual stats, after the game he said, the most important thing is to win a game. I'm trying to win a game in any possible way. Nikola Jokic may have taken just three shots in the first half of Game 1, but he was still the most dominant player on the floor. The two-time MVP act up 10 assists in the opening half, leading to gim dunks to Jamal Murray, and a bevy of inside setups to Aaron Gordon, who punished the defensive mismatches with some fury. Jokic gets the headlines, but Jamal Murray was also excellent in this game. Murray had 26 points, 10 assists and 6 rebounds in the game, and has been playing this way all postseason. Murray played 44 minutes and was an efficient 50%, 11 for 22, from the field. Aaron Gordon punished Miami inside early, whenever Miami would switch his screen and rolls, Gordon would bury himself inside and finish strong on his way to 16 points. Michael Porter Jr. had a strong contribution with 14 points, 13 rebounds and 2 blocked shots. Denver did not go deep in their roster, 8 total players played, and Bruce Brown was the only bench player to log more than 12 minutes. Denver has no injury concerns coming into Game 2. The Nuggets ranked 5th in offensive efficiency and 18th in defensive efficiency in the regular season. The Nuggets have gone 9-0 at home in the playoffs so far. Jokic finished with 27 points, 14 assists and 10 rebounds, his ninth triple-double of these playoffs, and, like all playoffs, faced little resistance against whatever was thrown at him. Murray dropped 26 points with 11 assists. Michael Porter Jr. may have shot 2 for 11 from downtown, but he was the third nugget to post a double-double, with 14 points and 13 rebounds. While Denver didn't find much success behind the arc, they pounded the two-point area, which is a heat weakness. The Nuggets shot a blistering 62.7% from inside the arc. For the playoffs, Miami is letting opponents shoot a crisp 56.8% from two-point range. The total in Game 1 was 219, and the teams combined to score 197. It was an under by a mile. Vegas dropped the total down 4 points, but it won't be enough. The NBA Finals is a big stage, and some players struggle to compete or match their averages in the Finals. This was evidenced by Max Struss and Caleb Martin shrinking under the bright lights. Denver plays a slow game, their tempo ranked 21st in the league, as they often wait for Jokic to make the right play in the half-court. Miami showed a fair amount of zone in Game 1, which also causes Denver's offense to slow down in an attempt to pick apart the zone and find openings. The four-point adjustment was not enough for Game 2, the under will hit. Take the under 215 points.